vej hjem. Hvad er det, Ego? Okay. I'm setting off for the most northerly point on the hill. And I'm walking up the old road. And I tripped on a stick. So this forms uh, part of the old road between Irvine and uh, Glasgow historically, apparently, according to the, the family lore, which I've no reason to doubt. And one of the reasons that we think this was the case is Robbie Burns allegedly walked this road on his way from Irvine to visit Lady Dunlop at Dunlop House, which is about a mile from here on this road, northwest kind of direction as we walk. The woods have all died back at this time of the year. Um, a lot of bird life around in the high summer, less so now, although I've already seen a few. We had a visit from the ravens this morning again, which was good to see. Black in the in the hedge there. Another point that was memorable during the summer doing this was walking up this road. I was very conscious of walking between the territories of different robins and the robins were no too happy at me traversing their pathway or their section. During the pandemic and the lockdown specifically, the there's very little traffic, you can probably hear the traffic just now. Traffic's kind of creep, crept back as the restrictions were lifted and then of course we're looking at them going back down again. But uh, quite evident the traffic. Still less planes and less um, traffic in the flight path to Glasgow Airport though. So at this point here, I'm looking at the transformer, the Scottish Power Transformer, which gives off gives off a hum. You can also hear the burn that's quite heavy with rain. Looking back down the old road turning towards the north. My drawing's not really formed yet. Obviously every time I make these journeys the drawings vary. Particularly notice when I'm recording it it's not as easy to be to fall into a meter or a or a or a pathway as it is when you're just drawing without the the conscious Awareness that you're filming yourself or you're recording it for a for the chat festival as I am just now. Going to open this gate and go in. Very very wet park. Okay, so I'm going to head towards the Robin Stone, kind of northwest direction. And I'm going to start drawing again. Conscious I'm not drawing at the moment, but I'll start again now. So, ground is very, very heavy, very wet. The reeds are up. Unfortunately, the farmers have no managed to catch the rushes before they caught again this year. So I'm re-walking the walk I did this morning, or rather this afternoon, earlier this afternoon I should say, um, if you were able to join me. Um, I hadn't recorded it live at the time, but I'm going to record it just now so that anyone who missed it can see what I was doing. So my drawing is still kind of bogged down, literally. 
as I said earlier, this is a one of four rubbing stones that we have for the cows in the in the on the farm that, that we, we live on. And uh, I always thought it was strange that Alexander Tom, my great grandfather, who was born who wasn't born here but he was raised here. Um there's megaliths on the site of uh, of his childhood childhood home with him being the man that he was and the work he did with astro work astronomy um, and so on so I usually turn at this point this has been my kind of preferred route around this field the North Park garden park we call it because it uh, it backs onto the old farmhouse garden um, so I'm turning now to basically travel due north um, I'm now walking over the the ridges of the rigs of the the fields were ploughed, heavily ploughed at one time with, with horses and there's still quite a pronounced kind of wave in this field which you sometimes feel and that sometimes comes out in my drawings not always but sometimes it does In comparison to the spring and the summer when I was doing this earlier in the year, it's a harder walk, a much harder walk, and I get really quite wet, I have to say. <laughs> but you're not able to, which is affecting my drawing, I have to say. It's stop at this point like I did earlier today and pan round to the to the to the west. It's quite grey and cloudy now but on a clear day you'd see down towards Arran and the mountains of Arran, Goatfell and its other mountains on the top of the island. Um, you can also see the main road over to Kilmarnock from here. Um, the railway lines in there too. The wall at, uh, at the end of the field uh, it's where the garden sits and the oldest part of the house dating back to 1650 sits there you can see and if I pan round to the, the greener field which is a better maintained park to the east and then back round past the pump park and then back to the garden park where I'm heading for the top north end corner Whoa. So when I was initially doing my my kind of dadist appraisal of a, of the farm and the fields and the, the the four points of the the compass, obviously lockdown was in full full flow at that point and we weren't able to go anywhere. So it was obvious to, to me to use being as lucky as I am to live in a place like this and have a bit of space around me to try and explore those places and pieces of of the terrain which I have always known since I was a child, but I haven't really visited them again recently so it brought back quite a lot of childhood memories to find myself in far flung corners of the of the policies where I maybe hadn't been since I was a wee boy um, either playing with my my brother and sister or with my cousins or or maybe helping my grandfather or my father to do stuff a bit of fence maintenance or maybe taking a tree down things like that things like that which you know would be kind of normal in my childhood. So a whole bunch of things about the past, both personal and, and family, but also wider, came to came to me. I also thought about the people who lived and worked the land before, before we had a good pair of neoprene wellies and a Gore-Tex jacket and how they managed to struggle their way through the winters um, in this kind of terrain and this kind of weather. It can't have been easy and you know we forget how lucky we are in a lot of ways so that was always playing in my mind too as well as the personal stuff and the family stuff but there's really kind of stuff going back into antiquity So 
because at this point I can see that my drawing from earlier on at two o'clock is still there, which is good. This one's quite different, I think, in feel. I was quite conscious when I was doing the live feed that I maybe went a bit too quick, but that was probably just a little bit of nerves. Myself here, it's danger of falling off. It feels to me like I'm kind of a bit bogged down. Maybe that drawing reflects that. So you'll see the drawing from two o'clock still there. I made it. So I've replaced the two o'clock drawing with the, the second one I just did there and I'll take the two o'clock one back down to the house and maybe post it. I sometimes write notes on them too to explain what happened and and how how they worked because they're very much working drawings and very much about the field, literally. Bug, meaning soft, in Gaelic. And this is how it is. <laughs> 